Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my reaction channel. My name is Teddy90 and today we're going to be reacting to The Black Death, the worst pandemic in history visualized by real life lore. Now, I've done real life lore on this channel before. I think it was Geography of Japan or something like that. Uh, many of you seem to have liked that one, so I've found this randomly in my suggested and I decided to do it. Sorry for the ish week long break that I took. I was I had exams and stuff like that, so... Yeah, I'm going to try to produce two to four videos every two to three days. That's about going to be my goal, but we'll see. We'll see if I can make that happen. Um, yeah, let's just let's just jump into it. Now, I don't really know what he's going to say. I'm going to preface this by I don't really know what he's going to say. So apologies in advance if I say similar to what he is going to say. I know in previous videos people have gotten upset when I say things that the video then proceeds to go on to say, uh, but I'm, I'm really not going to apologize for knowing a lot, I'm, I'm just not, but if that bothers you and if, and if me taking long breaks to talk about things bothers you, you might want to find somewhere else to go. Before we start, actually, you should go like and subscribe to Real Life Lore, they deserve all the love and happiness and everything else like that they produce the real content and I'm just some guy who talks about it. Now, let's move on to predictions. <sighs> My knowledge of a Black Death is limited. I don't know the facts and figures of it. I, I do know, obviously, that it was a horrific disease. I know that it was spread on rats via fleas. Um, I know it came from Asia. I think it came, uh, was it somewhere in China or did it come from the steppes? I think, I think it was somewhere in Central Asia on the steppes, but I could be mistaken with that. I know, what is it, like a quarter of the population of Europe or something like that died because of it? Like It was, it was a horrific, horrific disease. It, cha it changed the way that everyone... Um, like b before, before the Black Death, feudalism and serfdom were extremely strong, like that they were the foundations of Europe. But after the Black Death... The survivors, because there's a lot less population, the survivors could then demand better rights and higher wages and things like that, because there's so so few so less workers available to do the jobs that there were previously many many more workers to do the jobs. So they could then demand better wages, things like that, which had had led uh, led to the Renaissance, which which helped. Uh, bolster artistic desires and things like that because like there was less people around so like you had to put more money towards people and then they started doing a better job because they felt more like happy because they're getting a better job but also weakened feudal structures because like people had to go to cities and like leave their farm because like the cities needed more people because the cities lost a lot of people so like feudalism and serfdom lost a lot of power it and once more people moved to the cities and then started getting paid more Merchant class is starting getting built up more, which then started being able to have more power over the cities themselves, so that we could feudalism and people leaving the country, we can serfdom. I there, there's a lot of different th things that came out of the Black Death. I know the Phalangenists were pretty powerful during this time. The people who whipped themselves, saying that uh, this is God's punishment, so we have to punish ourselves. Uh, yeah, uh, and obviously during all times of chaos, the Jews were horrifically punished f for no real reason, but that's just their history. Um, yeah, that's that's about the limited extent I know. Uh, more will come to me as we go through the video, but that that's just starting off. Let's let's see where he goes with it. Is made possible by Curiosity Stream. When you sign up at curiositystream.com slash real life lore, you'll also get access to Nebula, the streaming video platform that real life lore is a part of. Pandemics and diseases have been a constant companion of humanity for thousands of years, and although they happen relatively rarely, they can be tremendously destructive, and they often change society in strange and unexpected ways. And there is perhaps no disease that has changed the entire course of human history more than the original plague, the bubonic plague, likely originating somewhere around the Tian Shan Mountains in Central Asia. Hey, got it right, somewhere in Central Asia. Got it right. I thought it was in the steps, though, so. 
that's what I got wrong, but essentially. The bacterium Yersinia pestis that causes bubonic plague lied relatively dormant with only occasional outbreaks for untold millennia until something changed in the 6th century AD. The Byzantine Empire was at its apex of power and influence. She had just retaken the Italian peninsula and was close to reuniting the entire Roman Empire again when, all of a sudden, at the worst possible time, the bubonic plague appeared in Egypt. It's not entirely clear how it got here from its origins in Central Asia, but the first global pandemic in human history was about to begin anyway. The bubonic plague is spread by infected fleas that live on the backs of rats. The rats stow away on ships and live within close proximity to humans, so when the ships carry the infected... It was spread by traders on the Silk Road. Granted, I don't think it was called the Silk Road at that time. But it, it was it was carried by traders on the Silk Road. If we go back to the map, no, that's the sound. Stupid rats. If we go back to the map, <clears throat> so you see how <clears throat> the Silk Road went from China, from the coast to China, all the way through, boop, 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 and went up like this, and then down into Persia, went down like this, and into India, and went like this up into Russia, right? <clears throat> So the ones that went through like Persia in this region would tend to go down here, down to the port of the Indus, and then get shipped this way, or they would actually go through Persia, which I have a feeling this particular one <clears throat> probably got spread going down the Indus route, and then hit the Indus, and then spread on ship, because that was probably the fastest way and easiest way to carry rats. And you can see how, like, a trade caravan, if it had a lot of rats, like, if it was, like, a food caravan or something, if it had, like, a lot of grain and other things like that, and it went down the Indus, blah, 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 and then trading for different things along the way, blah, 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 and rats tend to go with food. So they would travel, travel, travel. All it would take, all it would, take would be one infected rat <coughs> managing to get here. Now, of course, that wouldn't explain why it wouldn't have popped up elsewhere. I don't know why it wouldn't have popped up elsewhere, but that is probably the most likely way it got there because i i don't uh, rats would have gotten distracted along the way if they would have gone through this way right like unless unless it was unless it was like a pet rat and it was very specifically like brought along this way but even then like infections would have popped up here there elsewhere blah 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 blah, blah. granted they might have i don't really n know the history of this region's plagues particularly well but yeah I would imagine it would have been like a food and grain trader or something like something similar to that or a pelt trader or something from Central Asia traveling down here with rats stowing away in the back maybe only one rat surviving getting onto like a I don't know dye shipment or grain shipment and getting shipped to here and then getting shipped to here that's that's my best guess <laughs> sorry for the massive deviation is spread by infected fleas that live on the backs of rats. Mm -hmm. The rats stow away on ships and live within close proximity to humans. Mm -hmm. So when the ships carry the infected rats to new cities, the disease inevitably follows. Mm -hmm. The rats eventually die, and the fleas that actually carry the disease search for new hosts and jump on humans. When the flea bites a human, bacterium enters the body and rapidly spreads to the human's lymphatic system and multiplies. The infected person may not show any symptoms for one to seven days days after getting bitten, but they'll eventually develop a fever, chills, vomiting, and eventually the trademark appearance of smooth, painful buboes developing out of swelled up lymph glands around the groin, armpits, and the neck. Gangrene of the victim's fingers, toes, lips, and nose will eventually develop, followed by extreme pain caused by the decomposition of living skin while the victim is still alive. Without proper medical treatment, the fatality rate is between 30% and 90% of victims who become infected. And even with proper modern antibiotic care, the fatality rate still remains around 10% today. Obviously, the people in 6th century Europe and the Middle East had no access to antibiotics and they didn't even know that the rats and fleas were the cause of the pandemic. So the bubonic plague exploded when ships carrying grain and- Yeah, they thought it was uh, miasma from the sick. They thought it was like in the air. So that's why you see those long uh, noses, Th those uh, medical helmets with the long noses, they would pack those full of incense and other things like that because they thought it was my bad miasma in the air. So it was like incense, pepper, things like that to like really 
block out the smell. That's why it was, like, so long, because it was all filled with incense. And it thought that, like, if the plague was going to get through, it would have to go through, like, a long passageway before it got to the nose and the mouth. That was their thought. Which, frankly, they they thought... So, if we take that from a modern perspective, they, they thought it was a viral infection. They, they didn't know it was a vir- They didn't know what viruses and uh, bacteria back, were back then. But, from their perspective, it looked like a viral transmission. Because anybody who went near a patient got sick, right? Anybody who went near somebody who had the bubonic plague got sick. They didn't realize it was from the fleas. So, they immediately assumed it was from the coughing and other things like that. So, they, they even if they didn't know what it meant, they thought it was a viral infection instead of a bacterial one. When infected rats left Egypt for Constantinople, the mm-hmm. biggest city in the world at the time, the disease spread and would go on to wipe out 40% of the city's population, yep. infecting even the emperor himself. And as the epicenter of the Byzantine Empire, the plague spread out on ships leaving for ports across the Mediterranean and spread like wildfire. 25% of all the humans living in the Eastern Mediterranean region Region died within just a few years, and tens of millions died across the empire and Eurasia. The millions of deaths caused economic mayhem across the empire, who had just taken out massive loans to fight the wars of reconquest in Italy and the Western Mediterranean. With millions of yeah, without without this plague, if this plague wouldn't have happened, the wealth from Italy and the places most recently conquered would have then gone on to further their conquests into Spain and France, and it weren't Gaul, as it would then eventually be, which they would probably rename it. So Byzantium was very, 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 very close to reuniting the Roman Empire here. They just got completely destroyed by the plague. Uh, I think this was during, was this Justinian? I don't remember. Uh, 600 bubonic plague. 600 bubon... Don't mind my spelling. Bubonic plague. Don't judge my spelling. Uh, bubonic plague. Can somebody tell me why Yahoo always fucking pops... Yeah, plague of Justinian, yeah. Yeah, it was during the Justinian time. Yeah. What was yours? Yeah, the Black Death. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. And eventually returned, yeah. Poor... Poor guy. Yeah, like he was, he was very close to uniting pretty much all of Europe underneath his ban, underneath the Roman banner again, and that would have been a radical fucking change in history. But plague changed things, man. I mean, you just had to look at the window today to understand what's happening now. Of less people to work on farms and pay their taxes, the empire can no longer afford to pay for future campaigns or even to garrison the new reconquests, mm-hmm. and therefore the empire entered into a long, long state of decline from which she would never recover. Yeah. The vast depopulation and economic mayhem left the Byzantine Empire crippled and overextended, which allowed the Lombards the opportunity to quickly and easily take over northern Italy, while also providing a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for the Arabs and Islam to surge over the rest of the empire and take most of it over just a couple generations later. The first global pandemic would ultimately cause the deaths of around 50 million people, or 13% of all the humans in the world alive at the time, and led to the final destruction once and for all of the Roman Empire, while making room for new empires and religions to rise up in the chaos. The plague would finally quiet down again and remained relatively dormant after the mid-8th century, until several hundred years later when it would explode onto the world scene once again with even more fury and death than it had ever done before. Mm-hmm. In 1347, the bubonic plague re-emerged on the world scene in Crimea. The Republic of Genoa in Italy had a trading outpost at the time in Crimea called Kaffa, which was- Is he going to talk about the Mongols, uh tendency to throw like infected corpses over the walls and that's that's one of the theories of how the plague got spread the idea that the mongols were being mongols and launched like plague ridden bodies and they didn't realize it was the plague at the time and then ended up infecting i don't know if that's entirely true but that's that's what i've heard was being besieged by the mongols oh. He is going to do it. years previously, the plague had broken out in the Chinese province of Hubei around Wuhan and had killed 80 80%... percent. <laughs> oh man, that's uh, I feel bad I feel bad for Wuhan. Is that just like the plague capital or something? Of the province's population. It was carried across the silk. 
I'm sorry, killed how many? Two years previously, the plague had broken out in the Chinese province of Hubei around Wuhan and had killed 80% of the province's population. <sighs> fuck, fuck, fuck. <laughs> That's a big death toll. It was carried across the Silk Road in the Mongol army's supply and logistics lines before infecting the army that was besieging Kaffa. After suffering from the- This is 1357, right? 1357 Mongols. No, 13... 1357 Mongols. Let's see. Yeah. This... Oh, that's 12. Uh, where is it? Genghis Khan... Show us the 1300s, please. 1300s, please. 1300s, please. Uh, Jiang Bing died. No, Ilkhanat. Uh, Empire. Show us a map. Uh, last formal reunification. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. No, nobody cares. Blah, 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 um so yeah this is this is roughly their size but the mongol the mongols were losing territory over here so the mongols probably had it was it was stretched like that oh, this isn't a very good one uh here come on i believe in you can i just use this yeah okay whatever i'm just gonna use this so it was the Wan dynasty in china right that was the Mongol dynasty that ended up uh, controlling China and ended up uh, pretty much unifying with China. Uh, unifying is not the right word. What, what's what's that term? What's that term? Um, not unification. It's assimilating. They assimilated into China basically and became the ruling dynasty, just like the Qing in the 1700s, 1800s. Or was that the 1600s? It doesn't matter. Uh, they controlled all of this. There's the Ilkhanate in Persia, which controlled... Roughly about this, P pretty roughly about that. It was basically the Persian version of the Mongols, and then there was the, uh, I think it was the Golden Horde or the, was it the White Horde or the, was it the Golden Horde? The Golden Horde that controlled pretty much all of this, like from most of the U a decent amount of the Ukraine and like up through like here. Is what like the golden white-ish horde? I can't remember what they were called. Uh, controlled. They used to control most of Russia too. Okay, whatever. I don't care. They used to control most of Russia too, as you can see here. But they ended up losing a lot of that land and ended up getting like pushed back to like here. So they still did have lands in the Kaffir region, but they the the Russian principalities ended up getting united. So like the the general golden horde would be about like this. And the Ilkhanet would be like that. And then the Wan Dynasty would be over there. Anyway. That's neither here nor there. But yeah, the, the Mongols were still powerful during this time. The plague for a while. So the they still had control over most of the trade routes and things like that. So that's why... That's, that's how trade more easily spread from China to Europe. Because the Mongols very much kept banditry and other things down. Mongol army camped outside got the idea to begin catapulting their infected mm -hmm. corpses over the city walls in an early attempt at biological warfare. Yep. The residents of Kaffa began falling victim to the plague as well, and the Giannese merchants decided to just call it quits and escape on their ships back to Italy. Unknowingly to them, however, they had brought the infected rats and fleas with them on their ships, which were the seeds that would sow the worst pandemic ever in all of human history. After the rats got off the ships in Sicily and Genoa, the plague exploded all across Italy and quickly spread along trade routes across the entire Mediterranean and Europe. So between 1347 and 1351, the plague ravaged most of the European continent. In just these five years, it's estimated that as much as 60% of the population of the European continent died. I was wrong with my population estimate. I think I guessed what? Uh, a quarter of the population, so that's more than half. I was very wrong with my estimation. But some areas were hit harder than others. Mm -hmm. Mediterranean. Re 
I know Poland did pretty well during this time. Like it, it didn't get hit very well, but it was pretty isolated. Regions like Italy, France, and Spain saw as much mm -hmm. as 75% of their populations dying. 70% of England's population died out, 60% of Norway's, and 20% of Germany's. Paris and London both <laughs> lost half of their populations, and Florence lost so many people that they didn't recover their population back until the 1800s. But other areas of Europe were almost never even touched by the plague, like Poland, mm -hmm. most of Hungary, and Belgium. It's unclear why exactly the plague varied so greatly in intensity across the continent, but within just five- You think Belgium would be more severely hit, because during this time, Belgium was a very rich and prosperous area. They had uh, great textile trade and other things like that. Like they, they had big cities, so I'm surprised that they didn't get hit as hard as some others. That's curious. Poland makes sense. Poland wasn't as big as that during this time. Poland makes sense because they they were pretty much completely landlocked, and like they they they, they weren't rich players on the international stage, if that makes sense. So they like they were a backwater. So that that it it makes sense that they weren't really affected. Some people would think, oh, why would Norway be affected? Because they Norway was tied heavily to the trade in this region, even. Centuries after the Viking decline, Norway, Norway and the Scandinavian countries still retained pretty good trade relations with a lot of these nations throughout here in the North Sea and down here in the Atlantic coast. And so they were, they retained pretty good trading uh, stuff. So if France and Britain got hit, and since Britain was a major trading partner of the Scandinavians, it would then make sense that it would hop here. But then it didn't really hop down here into Poland because Poland was a backwater. And Hungary wasn't a backwater it just i don't I, I i can't predict what hungary didn't get hit. hungary was much larger hungary went from the carpathian mountains down here to about like this so so hungary was hungary was a big boy i'm curious why they didn't get hit poland was a backwater hungary wasn't really a backwater it wasn't filthy rich like the italian states uh, the French were becoming, and the Belgians, the, the Belgians should have been hit, but I guess they had good uh, sanitation or something. Hungarian should have been hit. Years, six out of every ten people living on the continent. Sorry, I'm going to go back. I don't know what's The happened. continent, but within just... Oh yeah, Poland was nowhere near that large. Five <laughs> years, six out of every ten people living on the continent beforehand was dead. The Black Death, as it became to be known, also heavily afflicted the Middle East, mm -hmm. where approximately one out of every three people died in that same five-year time frame as well. It's believed that in just this five-year length of time, the bubonic plague may have killed as many as 200 million people across Eurasia, which is absolutely staggering when you remember that the entire world population prior to the pandemic was only 475 million people. That means that it's possible that around 42% of the entire human population of the world died within just a few years from a single disease. To put into perspective... To them, to them during the time, that's why if you look at art before and after the plague, a lot of, a lot of uh, art before the plague were... Uh, very happy, very Christian, and like, oh, like lords and things like that are like much higher than uh, us, so like, the, so like kings and things like that would be bigger. After, after the plague, you notice that it becomes dark, macabre, like, it, it, everything about art and culture after that became like, a, a lot of them just assumed that they survived the apocalypse. And they're like, this this was the worst thing that has ever happened. Like that, we literally just had an apocalyptic level event. Many people thought that it was like it, the rapture was gonna like this was like a massive punishment from God. Like this shook faith in pretty much all institutions from the Catholic Church to Islam to uh, to feudalism to serfdom to everything. Like the, it it shook everything to its fucking foundations. And that's why afterwards, like, serfdom and feudalism became so weakened, because people realized that, oh, like, th th that doesn't, like, everything, everything could just break. And we have more power now because there's less of us, but there's so few of them that there's more of us than them. It, it became more bargaining power and things like that. It, it shook the entire fucking world to its core.
reflective of how absolutely earth-shattering and cataclysmic it was for the time. Yeah. That would be exactly like if a disease wiped out 3.15 billion people today in just a few years. It would irrevocably change the world forever, just like the Black Death did in the 14th century and like the First Plague did in the 6th century. In this case, the Black Death wiped out most of the people living in Europe, which caused the demand for common people as laborers uh, he is going to talk about it. The surviving peasants were in a much better position to demand higher wages and yeah. more freedom from the nobility, which the nobility had to accept as reality in order to keep society moving. Wages for surviving common people went up, the price of land plummeted, and peasants found new opportunities they never would have had beforehand. The Black Death had begun the destruction of serfdom and feudalism as institutions in Europe, and gave rise to the very beginnings of capitalism that would replace it. It would take Make Europe an entire two centuries to recover back to the population that she had prior to the eruption of the plague. And by that point in the 1550s, capitalism was well on its way to taking over the continent. The bubonic plague would periodically flare back up in various places across Europe and the Middle East for centuries afterwards, most yeah. notably in London in 1665 and Marseille in 1720. But none ever became a true pandemic again until the final and the most recent third Great Plague pandemic of 1855 in China. This time around, the plague appeared in the Yunnan province of China and quickly spread across the Qing Empire to the British outpost of Hong Kong, where it was transmitted aboard ships to the British colonies in India, where it wreaked immense havoc. This third bubonic plague pandemic would go on to claim the lives of 12 million more people, mostly in <laughs> India and China, but it was relatively mild everywhere else in the world. After the discovery of the bacterium that causes the disease and the realization that rats and fleas were the primary carriers in the late 19th century, and especially after the discovery of antibiotics, the deadly grip that the plague had over the human species began to finally fade away. But the bubonic plague does still exist today. Between 2010 and 2015, there were still 3,248 recorded cases of the plague across the world, and on average, nine people still managed to get infected by it per year in the United States. After thousands of years of chaos and earth-shattering pandemics though, humanity has finally learned how to properly fight back against the bubonic plague. If you want to learn more about how diseases like this work on a biological level or- We're not very good at dealing with other things though. <laughs> rather poor at dealing with quarantine. If you're curious for more information on the ongoing and evolving coronavirus pandemic, mm -hmm. Curiosity Stream has multiple fascinating short documentaries like this one, this one, or this one that will tell you about how the coronavirus began in Wuhan, how it spread to the rest of the world, and how scientists across the planet are racing to discover a vaccine. There's plenty in each of them that will explain how the world got to this point in the coronavirus pandemic, and these are just a few of the thousands of top quality non-fiction shows and documentaries that you can watch on Curiosity Stream. Of course, the library that you get through a Curiosity Stream subscription is now much larger thanks to their bundle deal with Nebula, the streaming video platform created by myself and loads of other educational creators. We made Nebula to be the home of our bigger and more ambitious projects, like my car review show Grand Test Auto with JT from Second Thought, where we drive and tell you what we think about some pretty cool cars. So to make sure you get to see that, along with all the other great original content being produced by creators like Wendover Productions or Real Engineering, sign up for the Curiosity Stream Nebula bundle deal at curiositystream.com slash real life lore. It's super simple. Any subscription there comes with Nebula included and at only $20 for an entire year. This is the best deal that exists in the streaming world. And as always, thank you for watching. Yeah. Great content again by Real Life Lore, amazing channel. He produces, he, he puts so much work into his, uh, to his videos. He deserves all the love, happiness, and everything else like that. Go like, go subscribe, everything else like that. That was that was a very good video. Now, I had a lot of the same things to say. I I hope I added some interesting new perspectives onto it. Um, once again, I seem to have known a little bit more than the video, but. Uh, you know, that just seems to be the way of things these days. Um, 
yeah, that, that was really good. Go go join Curiosity Stream and other things like that if that interests you. I'm personally a poor-ass college student that has put most of my money into stocks, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, but you, you do you. Um, if you liked my particular commentary on this, if you liked me rambling for 30 minutes on a 11-minute video, I mean, I guess welcome to my channel. <laughs> if you made it this far, I guess you like me. Um, go like, go subscribe, other things like that. If you want to. If you want to dislike, eh, more power to you. I'd thrive on your hatred. Apart from that, uh, that's about it. Love, butts, and happiness and everything else like that. I'll see you in the next one. I'll probably start streaming again on Monday. Or maybe Saturday. I don't know. We'll see. I have free time now. But I don't really feel like doing it right now. You know. Bye. Love you.